Today in the Smuggles Room, we're gonna find out that we have 42 days left before Star Wars Celebration. And our Mando costumes are not finished yet. Didn't we get a two year extension? How are the Mando's costumes not done? What happened? You found other projects. That happens a lot, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So today we're gonna work on Mando. That's coming up. What's up, you awesome geeks? I'm Brian and welcome to the Smugglers Room. This week, this chubby geek is up against the clock. Star Wars Celebration is upon us and we have two full Mandalorian costumes that we've put off almost until the last minute. So we're not gonna waste any more time. Let's dive in today and make some armor. I was quite intimidated when starting this Mando armor. The chest plate for ladies is a bit more complex to shape than the men's. We did some research on what style and how to achieve the female armor shape out of Sintra. We came across a YouTube video by the Mandalorian Mark Costume Club, say that four times, a how-to for women's chest armor. In the video, a gentleman by the name Fitz goes through different processes for making women's armor. He shows different materials and also different styles. We'll include the link in the notes below. It really helped us get a grip and dive into the process. I wanted to make sure, since I'm a little on the bustier side, to not create too large of a chest plate. So I decided to go with individual pieces rather than one full piece. And as I usually do, I started with creating rough outlines on Bumwad first. It took several iterations to nail down the shape I was happy with. We've done a lot of conceptual searching over the years to determine what style our armor would be. There are just so many options out there, especially now with the Mando series. I wanted something that wasn't necessarily Fett or necessarily Mando. However, I was able to utilize Fett's armor patterns to help me start somewhere for each piece. Now I'm gonna put it on some stiffer paper. to show you. I did both sides so that I could see what it would look like. I have here a couple of the Boba Fett style chest armor pieces. And I think rather than inventing the wheel, I'm gonna make a solid piece of this shape combined. I'm not gonna do the collar. I'm just gonna do a little bit of a Mandalorian take on the way he wears his armor. And then I'm gonna layer on a smaller layer on top, kind of inset. So it's the first time I'm working with Sintra ever. And so I was using a couple of different razor blades, which works. What I'm making my armor out of is this quarter inch stuff. And it's, it's pretty thick and beefy. I'm gonna go ahead and use the bandsaw on this, make my life a little easier. I've already done a little test with the sandpaper and the sandpaper does kind of clean up the edge. But uh, yeah, we're gonna try the uh, band press. Bandsaw, band press, wow. Technically speaking, and correct me if I'm wrong, our kit styles fit into the modern Rise of the Empire legacy and post-imperial styles. 
you're interested in making your own kit, you can visit the Mandalorian Mercs website. There's a slew of in-depth information, and it would be a must if you are considering submitting to them for membership. Okay, so we're gonna form the Sintra, which means we're gonna heat it up and then bend it and form it into position because it's, uh, it's a little flat right now. In order to do that, we're gonna use the heat gun with some heat resistant gloves. Do it slow. Heat a little bit at a time, form it, heat a little bit more, form it, so on. Get it how you like. Let's do this. kind of formed it on the sides left and right and I gave it just a slight curve at the top so that when it sits on there it's not sitting straight up and down but it has a little bit of a bend to it a little bit of a curve it's a bit sloppy I need to heat it and just kind of kind of clean it up you can see like this one's really wonky we can fix that I like how it sits when the magnets are on here what I'm trying to prevent is from it pulling the shirt up really weird I might slightly roll this over just a hair more and fix this wonkiness. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That looks good. I've got the chest plate somewhat formed to the point where I like it. And then I've got the uh, additional layers that I want to have. So I'm super fascinated at the psychology between Bride and I, how we grab onto a project and go with it. I'm super analytical and I like to check things off a list in a sense. And I'll go from one step to the next step to the next step. You like to go in order. I like this to has to happen order. before yes. that has to happen. And I like to finish the whole task and then go on to the next for the oh. most part. I don't like to do that. <laughs> no, you're you're a mess. You're all over the place. I, I like to finish one little part or piece and then move on to something else, but maybe not necessarily in order because those little wins give me little victories and I like the little victories. Yes. And my victory 
is creating all the templates of my armor and cutting them out and then putting it all on Sentra and then cutting it out. That's logical. Those are my, those are my little ways. That's an intelligent way to do it. I'm a measure twice. No, I'm not even no. that. I'm a measure <laughs> once nope. and cut three times. I'm a cut three times measure <laughs> once. That's who I am. <laughs> I think that just, I, I, I can't do it that way. I like to dive in. I like to get the material yes. and start making a mess out of it. And I like to be sort of organized. So it's interesting because we can take the same project with the same goal, yes, the same destination, and get there in two different ways. Two different, two different roads, like this. <laughs> so which path is your path? Which either, direction do you go? Either probably work. Mine's probably better. That's just primer and I'm already happy about it. <laughs> so what I'm doing with the armor is I did a base layer of silver and then I hit it with the rubber cement. And then I'm hitting it with brown and I'm gonna hit it with some more rubber cement in some of those same areas. The goal is where these areas are that you can see they're bubbled from the rubber cement that when we do the final coat on this one, which will be gray, when this gets peeled back, you'll get a two layered color effect. On Carissa's chest plate armor, there are seams we need to fill. On the front side, we'll use plastic weld, and once that's set, we'll go back to the back side and add a two-part epoxy to hold it together. The plastic weld, once cured, will sand really well, and we can use spot putty for any spots that we need to fill. So it's like clay. Yeah. So now when you mix this together like this, chemical reaction happens. And then once it dries, it'll harden. For now, it allows us to have clay that we can kind of sculpt into position and fill the gap. Sintra is fun and easy to work with, but you need to have some patience and time set aside to work it successfully. Heating, bending, heating, rebending, and you can overheat and overwork it. So baby steps seem to be a good tactic with this material. We're actually shocked regardless that we had so much fun with it after the initial, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing stage wore off. I'm gonna do a full review on the 3D printer here very soon, since Anycubic was kind enough to sponsor us coming up here. We were able to use Anycubic's new Photon M3 Max to print this piece of shoulder armor. I put the supports on, and as you can see, my choosing where they go was kind of a bad idea. The resin sands really smooth and it finishes really nice. As you can see by this guy right here, I was able to get it all sanded up and painted and do the little bit of the uh, peel weathering on it. I did leave some of the imperfections. I liked the texture that it gave it, but overall I'm super excited about how awesome it is to print something this large. It's resin, so it's got a little bit of weight to it, but I think it turned out really great. Super excited how this has turned out.
these Mando costumes, there are so many things left to finish. We have final weathering and things to do on my armor. We have to get Carissa's armor painted to match. We have to finish all the leather goods, the holsters, the bandoliers, and as much of that as we can get done on top of getting the helmets completely dressed and ready for the show. We have 42 days left. But we'll get there. How are we gonna get there? By building something out of nothing. <laughs> We're about to for a few days and <laughs> here's where my brain just kind of goes. <laughs> R E S P C T. Tell me what it means to. Yep. We have 42 days left. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what I was supposed to do. Today in the Smuggler's Room, we're going to find out we have 42 days until Star Wars. <laughs> One more time. <laughs>